Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peru's episode number 23! Oh my god, I actually got the episode number right. What a fucking surprise. Well, there's a lot of surprises today, boys and girls. I actually fucking released a podcast before nighttime, and it's a full episode. Holy shit! I know my voice cracked a little bit there, but I'm genuinely surprised at my uh, due diligence today. Okay. Because usually I'm a lazy piece of shit. So, again, very surprised that I actually got shit done, which says a lot about myself more than anything. Uh, But as of right now, I'm heading over to the gym because today is leg day and I'm excited. Like, genuinely excited because I actually really do like leg day. Why do you like leg day, son? Because I'm a fucking masochist. I love torturing myself. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm kidding when I say that shit either. Like, I'm, a, I'm, sh- I'm a strange masochist. I like to put myself through emotional and physical pain. Not emo shit. I don't cut my wrist and shit like that. That's fucking dumb. I swear to God, man. And listen, man. I, like, I, I've met people who've cut, like, slit their wrists and all that shit, but I don't condone it. I always kind of berate behaviors like that. It's like, dude, come on, man. When I say physical um, masochism, I mean like going to the gym and wearing myself out. And, and that that's the kind of shit I'm into, okay? For, you know, physical physical uh, hurting for, you know, self-improvement. That That's what it's all about. All of this shit that I do, all the fucking deranged shit that, that's part of this masochism, it, it's, it's all for the sake of self-improvement. That's really all it is, okay? I don't do shit to fucking ruin myself. Fuck that. I'm an egomaniac, man. I just want to, I want to better myself. I want to fucking be the top of what I can be. The fuck? Like, I've been down the fucking deprivation cycle. I've been down that road of just fucking not improving and just fucking withering away. I've been there, right? I don't want to be there. It's boring. It's, it's nothingness. It's fucking useless. Self-improvement. It's always a challenge because let's be honest, boys and girls, life isn't always positive. I've said this multiple times. Life will kick you in the dick more than I care to admit. It's how you come out of that. It's how we gather ourselves. That's really it. Burger Thursday, all $9.99 with a slice of pie. That actually sounds like a pretty fucking good deal. But again, we're on this February uh, guinea pig project right now. And so... I am still relatively eating clean, so to speak, but I might go for chicken wings today, I'm not going to lie to you. Buffalo Wild Wings, you get cheap wings for fucking $10, under 20, for 20 wings, because Tuesdays, chicken is free, free like the beautiful country of America. Yeah, original song. You're welcome. That was actually pretty all right. It's not terrible. I mean, could be better. Could be better. Jesus fuck. Yeah, it's like 1:30 in the afternoon, and every, nobody knows how to fucking drive. I'm talking to you, jackass. Fucking go, eh? Fucking go. Fucking go. Fucking go. Fucking go fucking go, bitch. Holy shit. Yeah, you heard me just fucking revving up that shit, right? Jesus fuck, man. Dude, fuck these people. Like, most of the people on the road are goddamn assholes, and they don't know how to fucking drive. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. Oh, my God. Swear to God, every time I get on the road, I become a worse person for it. (laughs) Every day I talk about self-improvement, all this shit, but every time I get behind the road, I'm like, ah, murderous intent. It's always coming up. I blame society. <laughs> I blame this world for all the wrongdoings. The sins of our fathers. What? The fuck are you on about, man? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm supposed to wake up at 7, but... What about, like, 9? So, kind of bummed out about that. And I'm going past 50. Son of a bitch. 
get a little irritable, then I start speeding, and it's a whole thing, uh, you know, try to be a better person, but god damn it, people don't drive me fucking crazy every goddamn day. But you know what was nice, speaking of uh, ir- irritating people, I went to the theaters yesterday, last night, around 9.40 p.m., nobody was in the theaters, and I watched uh, the Lego Movie 2, the second part, and man, I just, yeah, so I put the review video up, you know, a couple minutes, uh, like an hour or so after I watched the movie, and I gotta say, man, I mean, thinking about it now, I fucking adore that movie, I would love to watch it a second time, but probably won't, because I already pre-ordered the Blu-ray, so there's no point, because I could just watch it unlimited amount of times in a couple of months, so that's fine and dandy. What is this asshole doing in front of me? Why do you keep breaking, asshole? What are you doing? Fuck, dude. Seriously, you're like trying to stop at a fucking green light? What is wrong with you? This fuckface with its with his bright ass, his or her bright ass Chevrolet. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. You look like an asshole. Like a bloody tampon asshole. Fuck, man. You're getting really creative creative with your fucking disses. Yeah. Yeah. Driving kind of makes you do that. Because the asshole's like this. Unbelievable. Dude, can you fucking do something? What the fuck is wrong with your fucking thing? Like, it's 45. It's not a suggestion, right? 45 isn't a suggestion. This motherfucker's like going 40. Fuck me, dude. Yeah, most of these cruise peruses, I am just bitching away about how terrible people are at driving. And granted, I'm not perfect, okay? I don't claim to be perfect. I make mistakes all the fucking time, okay? But, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. This shit just gets ridiculous at times, right? Dude, if you're gonna fucking move, then fucking move, asshole. Fucking asshole. It's not even 50. It's not even 50. Stupid bitch. You old bitch. Of course it's an old bitch. God damn it. Ah! Old people shouldn't drive. I said it. Multiple people have said it, okay? It's not a new opinion. It's not a radical opinion, okay? Old people shouldn't drive. You know why? It's science. Their reaction time, their fucking uh, motor ability diminishes significantly with age. By the time you're 50-something... Oh my god, asshole. Hurry the fuck up and turn then. Fuck. By the time they're like 50-something, people generally have worse motor skills than they were at 30. Okay? Dude, so are you suggesting no one should drive? Dude, I'm not saying no one should drive. I'm just saying, god damn it. If you get to a point of age where it's getting difficult for you to drive and you need a lot of assistance to do so, you shouldn't fucking drive. Holy fuck. so fucking irritated at people driving. And again, that old cunt. It's another, it's another fucking old person. Another fucking old person just driving me crazy. Jesus fucking Christ. But well, you know, the good thing is, headed to the gym. I'm gonna relieve some of this tension, this angst, so to speak. And then we are headed to the Golden Knights game. Super excited for that super excited. Sorry, just getting this rubber band out of the way because rubber bands are kind of destructive. Well, couldn't find it. So, Goodbye, rubber band. You're going to be stuck in the car forever. Oh, shit. Camera falling out. Gotta fix that before the light turns green. So, a lot of fun stuff happening in the world of sports. Lots of fun things. So, you know, this over the past weekend, the Alliance of American Football just kicked off. And the crazy thing is, um, based on the Nielsen rating that I read on, um, I believe it was Fox Sports or 12 Up, I don't know which side I was reading it on, but based on the Nielsen rating, the Saturday ABC primetime NBA game from the for the Houston Rockets and the Oklahoma City Thunder 
did marginally worse than the first kickoff game for the AAF, which was the Atlanta, oh boy, I forget their fucking name, Atlanta and the Orlando Apollos. Because Atlanta is generally forgettable in sports, except Atlanta United FC, which bolsters a lot of great talent there, and they just won the MLS Cup this past season. But the whole point being, you know, I wouldn't have admitted this a year or so ago, but man, football is such a wonderful sport. Football is such a wonderful sport. American football is such a wonderful sport. It has so many subtleties that, you know, people just fail to appreciate. And I was one of those people. I used to say, oh, football's fucking boring. It's a, it's a fucking 15 second bullshit sport. But you know what? There's so many nuances to it that once you start understanding the fine, you know, mechanics of certain things and you start talking to people who understand the sports more than you do, boy, oh boy, it gets fun. I'm not one of those fucking fantasy nerds, though. Fuck that shit. Like, fantasy is such shrivel, supplementary bullshit. It, 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 it kind of ruins the sport for me. Fantasy and fantasy players, like avid fantasy players who just only talk about fantasy, that shit, it gets so fucking annoying. It's like, can you just appreciate the game that's going on? But Jarvis Landry couldn't get 20 points, you fucking loser. Like, can you fucking shut the fuck up and enjoy what the fuck these athletes are doing? Get the fuck out of here. Like, most of these, most of you fucking fantasy players can't even fucking run a mile. Yet you have the audacity to bitch about how much an athlete is carrying the ball, however many fucking yards they're running. Shut the fuck up and just enjoy the fucking sport. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I believe fantasy just generally rule. Like, fantasy sports, like, as, as much money as it makes it, right? Fantasy sports just generally ruin a lot of the viewing, in my opinion. For me. For me, at least. That's just me. I just would love, like, here's the thing. A game that's like 10 to 7, right? There might be a lot, like a game that ends 10 to 7 might end with a lot of defensive stops, a lot of great defensive plays. And me as a fan, I love shit like that. I love seeing shit like that where defensive players get all the fucking nod. They become the stars of the day. But, you know, fantasy players, oh, it's not right. He, you know, he didn't get this many yards. He didn't throw for this much. Who fucking cares? It's the sport that fucking matters. These are the same fucking nerds who will fucking watch the halftime show and jerk themselves off like, oh, did you watch Maroon 5? Doing their, doing their sugar dance? Fuck, dude. And I know I'm generalizing. I know I'm generalizing, okay? But I'm not gonna apologize. Fuck that. You fucking fantasy players are just so up your own fucking asses. It's like, get, get, get over yourself. Oh yeah, dude, I picked fucking Kareem Hunt in this pick. It was a great pickup. Congratulations, kid. Like, what the fuck does that equate to? Just shut the fuck up and enjoy the goddamn sport. Why can't you do that? Is that is that fucking hard? Apparently it is. Apparently just enjoying the sport is difficult for everybody. Because nowadays we gotta insert our stupid ass opinions and politics into everything that it's just toxic. It's just fucking toxic. And none, it's none more so apparent in the NBA, okay? Like, the NBA and its fucking f toxic-ass fans try to spread stupid fucking talks all day, every day. That, yeah, the ratings are dropping like flies! I'm not even surprised at that shit anymore. Like, I love basketball, boys and girls. I do. I really do love basketball. But the, the shit this NBA league has... The, the, the shit the league has become... It's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. I talked about this. The parody issue the Le cancer issue. It's a fucking huge problem for this league. And honestly, I don't think the NBA is going to get any better from this. I really don't. But it, 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 and it'll all culminate to this, in my opinion. The day LeBron James retires, the, the day LeBron James finally says goodbye, which I hope is fucking soon, to be honest, as a Lakers fan. Um, and the day the Golden State Warriors kind of subside, I think that's when NBA can have parity and it can be good again. It really can. Make the NBA great again. And all these fucking pseudo-intellectual fans who are woke as fuck. Oh, the, you know, the NFL's racist. What? How's the NFL racist, dude? You fucking bum have a car. This motherfucking bum spilt this fucking car, piece of shit. That's why I don't fucking like homeless people. You fucking irritate the fuck out of me. 
the NBA is dying. And I'm kind of glad it is. I'm kind of I'm kind of glad it is dying in that sense. It's been the Golden State Warriors league for a long time now. And honestly, when you have a league like that it, with no parity, it's a fucking joke. And yeah, people might bring up the fact that the Patriots have won six and seventeen years. That there is still parity. You still wonder like if the Patriots would have won. There's a huge. There were huge question marks every time they're in the Super Bowl. Can you really say the same in the last five years about the NBA? No, I certainly can't. And that's why that 2016 year was pretty phenomenal as just a fan to watch. Like, wow. The Golden State Warriors blew a 3-1 to one lead. That's incredible. Doesn't really happen a lot, right? But it did. And so now we're stuck with this kind of proverbial, you know, train wreck of a league where it's one player and one team. And the Eastern Conference is a fucking shootout. And I honestly don't care about the Eastern Conference at all. I really don't. I still think the Boston Celtics are going to make it into the NBA Finals, but that's just me. Like, like the NBA just bums me out a lot. That's all it is, man. That's all that shit is. Like, at least with the Super Bowl, despite how boring this one was, like, you, you still felt tension. You still felt a lot of tension throughout the game. You still felt a lot of tension throughout the entirety of the playoffs. But with the NBA the last few years it's like what the fuck is the point what the fuck is the point there was that one Western Conference final where San Antonio looked like look they absolutely looked at, like like they were going to carry off with the win there but Zaza cheap, a cheap shot you know tagging Kawhi Leonard like that like a piece of shit that was the biggest pussy ass move. Like, if you already, if I, like, if you didn't already like the Golden State Warriors, which I really don't because of their toxic fan base and because of Kevin Durant, the fucking, it's not the fucking move anymore. It's his little fucking passive aggressive shit and the ironically dull nature of how he perceives things. Like, he's a fucking moron. And every time someone talks about the NBA, like, oh, these players are young, brilliant geniuses. Like, no, dude, they're, assholes like they're they're fucking passive aggressive millennial assholes who are entitled as fuck and they are ruining the sleep (laughs) absolutely they're ruining the sleep the spirit of competition i feel is dead like i miss the kobe era of competing and i know people are gonna just fucking throw stats and shit oh the kobe era wasn't that great (laughs) there was still competition back then Can you really say from 2000 to 2010, you can foresee everything that would have happened except the three Pete Lakers because boy, oh boy, that was a great Lakers squad. That was one of the best fucking Lakers squad. 2001, I mean, fuck man, that Lakers team was unbelievable. And I remember being as a kid, like I wasn't really super aware of the technical things in basketball but like you understood how good this team was because like everybody was cocky about it like everybody in LA you know because you know if you live in LA you're a Lakers fan okay if you're a Clippers fan you're a fucking moron like who, who the fuck wants to even talk to you and that was our mentality every fucking time we saw Clippers fan and there was a minority Clippers fan base but you know, when the Lakers were dominant, man, uh, that was insane. And, and then the subsequent years after that, when they lost, to, when, you know, San Antonio won, and then Detroit won, and then just back and forth, back and, a lot of back and forths, man. And 2011 was such an incredible year for the championship for Dallas. I mean, Dirk Nowitzki just doing his thing. And now I think, I think really the savior of this league can be Dallas. For whatever reason, I think Dallas... If Porzingad, Doncic, and Dirk Nowitzki somehow, the trio of them, the European European bigs, somehow win a championship in the next two, three years, oh boy, I think the dynamic of the, the landscape and dynamic of the NBA can definitely change for the better. And, you know, once you, once you dethrone the Golden State Warriors, I think the NBA can really flourish and really be open. And again, the whole LeBron James thing, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. LeBron, the goddamn cancer, okay, I, I, I know, I know people are gonna backtrack, I know people fucking bitch at me about whatever, 
because yeah, he came to the Lakers. I was so excited. And you know, I'm not gonna hide that feeling. I never do. Because that was an exciting time. But right now, what LeBron is doing, it, it's it's a it's a fucking shame. It's a fucking shame because he tried to he tried to fucking trade away the entire team like a goddamn GM. It didn't work out. And now he's a pouty little bitch. Like, fuck man. I get LeBron critics now. I really do. Like, that motherfucker is in my team, but I am super critical of the guy right now. Like, you have no idea. It's pretty much like, all right, motherfucker, you want a championship or bust? Fucking prove it then. That's the fucking mentality I'm coming in with right now with LeBron James. That dude is a fucking cancer. Holy shit. And yeah, I do rock his 23 shirt. I do rock the LBJ shirt from Nike. But at the same time, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to call a fucking bullshitter out right now. Because, yeah, the shit he's been doing, absolute bullshit. Absolute cancerous, cantankerous behavior from the motherfucker. Don't like it at all. I do not like it at all. Motherfucker's disgusting at times, dude. But that's sports. That's sports, right? That is sports in a nutshell. On cloud nine the one day and then the next day you are in the fetal position crying for some semblance of the glory days and you know here's the thing boys and girls also when people make fun of me as a lakers fan i'm like sweetheart what what do you make what what are you gonna laugh about our 16 rings oh but you didn't win them all in LA. Uh, okay cool like five in minneapolis well it was a five in minneapolis 11 in la what are you even going to say to me right now? But you weren't part of it. It's part of the history, motherfucker. When you when you have the team, when you're when that team is your team, you adopt the history and you learn about the history and you contextualize it into your own fandom. Okay, that's how fans. That's how fandom works. So when you tell me I and mean, when you give me this shit, oh, you you weren't alive back then, dude. I can still appreciate the great basketball that was played by the legends before you know who's playing right now. So all you fuckboys on the internet. And fuck girls who try to argue with me on stupid shit like that. I will put my balls in your mouth. Because you fucking morons don't know shit about history. And it's hilarious when people try to argue with me on basketball. It really is. But, boys and girls, there are cunts everywhere, okay? Cunts are everywhere. There's no point in arguing with these stupid motherfuckers. I let out my opinions, and these are the videos that log it. And quite frankly, I don't give a fuck of all your opinions as well. So, boys and girls, follow me at the Sky Lounge and all links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content.